guys, my name is Michaela, and you're watching Fun Size Style. It feels good to be slowly getting back in the groove of filming again. Like, it's just been way too long since I've been consistently in front of the camera, so it just feels so good to be back. And today's video is one that I didn't expect to film, obviously, as you can imagine by the title. But I wanted to share this experience that I had recently and it's been a whirlwind. I wanted to share it because this was one experience that normally I wouldn't share this just because I don't think that like it's just kind of a weird thing to share about in my opinion. I don't know, it just not like makes me uncomfy because if it made me uncomfy I wouldn't share about it. It's just not something I would normally share about. There were things that happened during this experience like such a pivotal moment in my faith and a stark reminder of God's faithfulness. Um, the past year and a half has been really hard, hence why I took a break from filming videos at all. The, today's video that I'm going to be sharing has absolutely nothing to do with my last video. Actually, so my videos are a little going to be a little bit out of order, but I have like so many things to update you guys and share with you about that because I haven't filmed in so long but the reason I'm uploading this and sharing this a little bit out of order this video obviously has nothing to do with the previous update and if you don't video and if you don't follow me on Instagram you don't know what happened uh, with my hearing implant so I wanted to share I want to share a little bit about that I'll be sharing an update video about that too as you can tell from the title I had my first emergency surgery. This was my 30th surgery and my first emergency surgery and it obviously it came out of nowhere. This was not on my horizon whatsoever, not on my plans. Um, emergencies never are. God's faithfulness and his presence was so obvious and real during this time that I just wanted to share it and obviously the Lord's presence is always in our lives. And he's always working even in the deepest, darkest, hardest times. But this experience, it was just so obvious because the details that happened are not something that I could have even orchestrated if I tried. On March 14th, I woke up like a normal day and just had a normal day. I had, I'm working a corporate job now as well as doing social media so I essentially have two jobs now which is like crazy but I am working corporate as well right now so I had orientation for my corporate job that morning and it wasn't orientation it was just like confirming like I had to submit my birth certificate and like my social security card my ID whatever I had that and a little bit after the meeting I just started feeling weird just not right and like having some lower back pain and you guys know like I've had a few challenges with my scoliosis surgery but nothing related to lower back pain. I started like throwing up and the pain in my lower back got worse. I immediately knew what it was so about seven years ago I had an episode where I passed a kidney stone and I didn't have to go to the hospital or require like any medical intervention and I just handled it at home and it was fine and I never had any problems since I don't have like kidney or bladder problems like it's just not ever something that I really struggled with. I just had that one episode like seven years ago but this episode that I realized I was having was just like that one so I knew immediately what was going on. The pain actually wasn't too bad yet and as you guys know I my pain tolerance is higher than a kite. Kidney stones are classified as like some of the most intense pain that you can feel and it brings like grown men to their knees. My pain tolerance was really high so to me um, the pain wasn't too bad yet but I had just been like throwing up quite a bit. Then I stopped throwing up and the pain went away after like in the evening and so I started to feel better. I knew that I was probably going to pass it soon or so I thought. I felt fine the rest of the night and I slept great that night. Felt totally fine, like totally back to normal. Woke up the next morning, again, felt totally fine. Actually, I mixed up the dates. So that Thursday, I actually had a virtual follow-up appointment with 
my orthopedic surgeon. And then that Friday, no, Wednesday. Okay, so this started happening Wednesday afternoon. And that's when I started feeling weird. Um, and then Thursday morning was when I w woke up again feeling fine. Um, and then Thursday morning was the morning that I had for my corporate job, the ID verification meeting. It was a virtual meeting. So I felt fine. It was after that meeting that I started not feeling well. Like I said, Wednesday night, I started feeling fine again. Thursday, I slept, you know, Wednesday night, slept through the night. Thursday, I woke up, had the ID meeting, felt fine, slept great, you know. And then after the ID meeting is when I started to get all the, the pain again. And then I was throwing up more, except this time I couldn't stop. I told my parents that they had to take me to the hospital because I knew, like, I wasn't okay, because obviously that's not normal. They took me there, and I told them what I knew it was, and so they did, like, the protocol for that, which is, like, CT scan. Um, they gave me, like, medication and anti-nausea. I started feeling bad. took, like, six, five, I don't know, get the IV in, took forever. A great nurse, um, great doctor, like, the people that the Lord brought during this experience from beginning to end was, like, incredible, including the team and the... CT area. They were incredible. I had the CT and like sure enough they found kidney stones. They actually found multiple but the one that was problematic that was causing me to be so sick was blocking the ability for my bladder to empty fully which was really interesting because I wasn't having difficulty going to the bathroom at any point during that and so that was interesting to hear that it was preventing my bladder from emptying all the way because of like where it was. You're gonna need to be transferred because you're gonna need to have surgery to have this one removed. Um, it was six millimeters. I said, okay, like I have all my surgeries in Ann Arbor. It was exceptionally slow. Obviously, ERs are slow and it's a triage system. Like if someone's having heart problems, it's gonna come before somebody having kidney stone problems. Even my nurse said like the CT readings were just like really slow that day. So I got there at like 2 or 3, and I was there until 10 or 10.30, 7 hours. And after I got anti-nausea medication and pain medication, I was feeling really good. I wanted to eat, but they wouldn't let me eat. I didn't know like how urgent the team in Ann Arbor would think that the surgery needed to be done. Like if I was going to get there and like go into surgery right then and there, that's not what ended up happening. But in the meantime, I was NPO, which means no food, no water. And so I was starving, like I said, I got there at 3 and was there till 10 or 10.30. The weather was not great. Um, she said that we could, my parents could have drove me to the ER, but then they would have left my IV in, obviously not like the bag, but they would have left, they would have unhooked me and then I could have saved that IV for when we got to the hospital. But the weather wasn't super great that night and so not great for traveling and so I was like, you know what, I'll just, the ambulance, they offered me, you know, we could do private transfer with my parents or an ambulance, um, and I said ambulance because obviously with the weather circumstances, I didn't want my parents to travel during that time, and they didn't have, like, their stuff packed, obviously, and I knew it was going to be a long night. Um, this was also my first time in the adult emergency room. I used to go into the pediatric emergency room when I do need emergency care. I actually haven't been in an emergency room in like seven or eight years, which I'm not one to like go to the emergency room unless I'm having an actual emergency. So my team here at the ER deemed that this was emergent and they called Ann Arbor, talked to their team and was like, yeah, we think she should come. Um, they got me an ambulance transfer. So the paramedics come and they were super sweet, um, Amy and Haley. Amy actually recognized me from social media, which she told me after the fact, like when we got to Ann Arbor, because they had to wait with me a while while I got, I don't know, it was packed. It's like a war zone when you go to this ER because patients are waiting in the in the hallways and because they don't have enough beds and it's literally like a war zone. So they were waiting for me there. Amy said like when she saw me, she realized that like I was the girl from social media. And so that was just like a really cool moment and like just so many cool people that God brought me during this really scary and unexpected time. So thank you to Amy and Haley for getting me there fast and safe. It was definitely the quickest I've ever gotten to Ann Arbor. Like, I hadn't eaten at this 
point since Wednesday I was getting hungry, I was exhausted, and I also hadn't slept since Wednesday night. And there, just in the ER hallway, waiting for hours, it was packed. I was the youngest person there by quite literally 75 years. I didn't see anybody that night, like in their 30s or 20s or 40s, like nothing. Like I was definitely the youngest one. And in the adult ER, they don't see a lot of patients my size. And this is where things get a little bit complicated. So. Also to add to the mix, because I don't have kidney or bladder problems to begin with, I don't have an established doctor or surgeon in this area. And so I knew that going to the ER, I would quite literally get paired with anybody who was available, which is scary because I'm just going to say it, not all doctors are good doctors and not all surgeons are good surgeons. So I just didn't know who I would end up with. God was working behind the scenes. He knew this was coming and you'll hear about that soon. But so I'm in the ER. I finally get into a room. I finally make it out of the hallway at like 5.40 in the morning. I got to Ann Arbor just before midnight. It was a long night slash morning. Like patients are screaming. Like it was just insane in the adult ED. Before I make it into the room, the other problem that we had is that my blood sugar started crashing because I haven't eaten since Wednesday night and this is almost Friday morning now. And it is Friday morning by the time my blood sugar crashed. And so I told none of the nurses, I know you guys are like super busy, but my blood sugar is crashing. They tested and it was like in the 40s, which is like really bad. They gave me this big like syringe of it and just kind of like put it all in. And they ended up giving me too much because I felt like a little faint when they put it in and I've had like uh, glucose drips after surgery and stuff and I never felt like that so that's how I knew they gave me too much and this happened like twice actually so by the third time I was like hey can you guys go into my record and like see what kind of drip and how much they put in previously because I've never felt like this when the glucose drip did and they did end up giving me too much and they had a different way of distributing it the third time that it dropped and then they just left me on um, the drip and it was it was fine. It stayed steady. I finally get into the ER room at like 5.40 in the morning. I had a really great nurse. She went to the pediatric hospital to get me a pediatric gown because they don't have pediatric gowns in the adult e ER. I basically already had all my testing done when I went to my local ER. So when by the time I got to Ann Arbor, I didn't have to do any more testing other than they did do a blood draw and it was the same as it was in Ann Arbor, it was fine, I was not, didn't have an infection and I wasn't septic or anything like that. So they don't usually, I guess, have a kidney surgeon like on call, um, but that Friday they did. I got to meet with him. Later in the afternoon I met with resident, kind of early-ish in the morning. Uh, that's when I found out, I didn't find this out in my local ER, but they didn't tell me quite how big the second one was that I had. And how big it is, it was too dangerous to try to remove them both at the same time. I asked about that because I'm obviously going to have to go through this again. The hope was that they could remove them both at the same time, but that wasn't an option. Being that this was my first time in the adult ER, like I had to advocate a lot for what I needed. One, because they weren't familiar with me there. Two, because they're not used to patients my size and my circumstances in the adult ER. Like usually kind of thing is seen in a pediatric realm and so I had to educate a lot. When my urology surgeon resident came in, she's like, oh, we typically um, sometimes do these surgeries under twilight anesthesia. And if you don't know, for people with type 3 OI, twilight anesthesia uh, sedation is incredibly dangerous because there's no respiratory support. So I know of two people with OI type 3 that have died from having twilight anesthesia because you don't have any respiratory support. You're not, there's no breathing tube down your throat and you go into respiratory distress. I gave her that education and said that basically if you do this type of sedation, you could kill me. So obviously that was quickly off the table and they knew I would need like full general anesthesia. The interesting part of this too was that I had heard from the resident that they had discussed with the surgeon to possibly allow me to go home and so I was pretty upset because I had rode in an ambulance all the way there. I had been there all night, all morning, all day and had been told that this needs to be taken care of and so I wasn't going to leave until it was taken care of. It wasn't, I didn't have 
an infection and the longer that you let it go, the higher the risk is present for infection and going into surgery with infection is not ideal. I wanted to take care of it before it got worse. I knew that my pain and my nausea wouldn't go away until this was taken care of and I didn't want to be left in limbo for a week while we schedule a formal surgery as like this needs to be taken care of and um, they agreed that since this was my second ER visit now that they would take care of it. The other complication to this is that I typically have all of my surgeries at the pediatric hospital um, because even though I am 25, anesthesia for somebody my size um, and my anatomy is a lot different than a typical adult and so um, I obviously don't need as much and I need pediatric equipment for anesthesia and things like that um, that they don't have at the adult hospital and so I had to advocate for that. This is where God really starts moving even more in the details. So this is a Friday when all this goes down and by the way let me first say like my surgeon that I got paired with was like incredible like such a god thing like he's like the head of urology and my nurses told me like i was so lucky that it not only was a urology surgeon there but it was him that was there because i he's like the best of the best he's not always there like on call do like same day surgery Just such a big god moment super nice guy very knowledgeable but this is where like the details like really get cool because only him and I was like nervous because like I said I won't just let anybody operate on me like I hadn't gotten to meet this guy and right up until I was about to go in the operating room practically so like I was so glad that it was him and like he was a nice guy smart like I was okay with I felt confident in him operating on me I you know gave consent for that but then I told him they usually have my um orthopedic surgeon OI surgeon scrub in as well to help with positioning so that I don't break any bones but during surgery especially with positioning needed for this type of surgery it's a lot more complicated and a lot more risky as far as just like maneuvering my limbs and stuff so that I don't fracture. My orthopedic surgeon is not always available on Fridays. She is normally either in the OR on Fridays or sometimes leaves for conferences. When I realized it was a Friday I was like stressing because I'm like crap like she's probably not here and so I got a hold of my OI team there and they're like no like she's here she's actually available all day long for whatever time you go into surgery and that was like such a god moment and then I later found out that the urology surgeon and my orthopedic surgeon are both heads of their departments he's like top of urology she's the head of orthopedic surgery and as heads of the department they meet together every week about stuff. I don't know what they mean about, but I later found that out, which is like so cool. And she told me like, my orthopedic surgeon told me like, this is like absolutely crazy how all this worked out because like if I could pick a surgeon for you for this circumstance, I would have suggested him. And so the fact that like he was there that day, like it's just so cool. Such a god moment and like of all the urology surgeons that I could have been paired with. It's one that my OI surgeon meets with every week and knows well and knows that his skill and how he treats his patients well is the exact person that I needed for this moment. It could have been anybody, one that she doesn't know. Obviously orthopedics and urology don't cross over much, but as heads of the departments, of their separate departments, they meet for things. That aspect of it was so cool. My urology surgeon was really excited to find out that after I told him who my orthopedic surgeon was, that it was her and um, he's like, oh my gosh, no way. Like. We meet every week, like I know who she is, know each other well, and he's like, we've actually always wanted to do a case together, but as you can imagine, orthopedics and urology don't cross over very much, if ever. Since that was the first time they got to do a case together because of me. It's o'clock and I finally made it over to the pediatric hospital. It was deemed that they were going to do a pediatric hospital. There was talk of bringing it at the adult hospital, of bringing a pediatric anesthesiologist over there. I was just so glad to get to Ma and see familiar faces. And it was such a weight lifted because obviously again I am 25 but like care for me is just so different when I'm still a pediatric size and anatomy and it's just important to have skills in that. And so it was just like such a weight lifted when I finally made it to Ma and like the fact that Everybody that I needed 
that that day was there was like such a bad thing. I was nervous this time around because I hadn't had this type of surgery before. Um, and so I, you know, I just would hope that it would go well and that it, it did and that they were able to remove it. The team that I had in the OR, incredible, like coolest dudes for anesthesia team, greatest gal for a nurse, like asked me like, how many surgeries have you had? And I said, oh, this is my 30th one. And then I said, but this is my first like emergency surgery. And they're like about fell over and like you you call the shots girlfriend like you tell us what you need tell us what to do and oh i just want to mention like my pre-op nurse was really incredible too and it was so good to see familiar faces i later found out when i got to mott that the head of anesthesia at mott recognized my name and all these discussions that were happening and he fought for me to be able to come to mott i'm so grateful for him i wish i could, i'm gonna try to find out his name so that I can like send him a thank you or something because it meant a lot to me um, to be somewhere that I felt safe and people know me there. It's not somewhere you want to be known but it, it does mean something in these times and so so grateful for him that he fought for me to come to my the people in that hour were like so incredible and so kind and were like you're so brave. How much you've been through like your attitude is just incredible and just the coolest group of people. Um, and we're like so reassuring it's gonna be alright. When I found out later previously in the afternoon what time my surgery was gonna be, my parents made it down because in the midst of all this, we can't just have one crisis at a time, we have to have two. That night I had told you the weather was bad, we ended up having eight inches of water under our house, and so my parents couldn't leave until they t got that taken care of, because obviously you don't want mold growing in your home, take care of eight inches of water under our home, and but thankfully, by the time I was going to surgery, they were able to leave and like make it down there. And just as I was coming out of surgery is when they got there. So like the timing was perfect. Originally when I was at the adult ED, they told me that I might need to be admitted, but I didn't end up needing to be admitted. I'm doing so well post-op. They were able to remove the kidney stone without a stent because of where it was. It, I had practically almost passed it. It was just kind of like stuff. So they were able to go in and just remove it without a stent, which is like such an answered prayer because I had heard that those are just absolutely miserable. I'm glad that I didn't have to have that. That was like another answered prayer, like just so many answered prayers. When the surgery was over, I start waking you up in the operating room. I'm waking up, I see like obviously everybody in the room and I didn't get to see my orthopedic surgeon because I had already been asleep by the time she made it. She normally steps out during the surgery because when she's not the primary attending, obviously to not overstep. This time, obviously since my urology surgeon and her know each other so well and they've always wanted to do a case together and he deemed that because of the potential complications that he wanted her help. She stayed the whole time this time and she was like, Michaela, like I'm here and like we, we did it, like you did it girlfriend. She's like, what the heck, I just talked to you yesterday and you were totally fine and now we're in the operating room together and I'm like, I know, like, um, so to see her and like, hear her voice meant a lot. This type of surgery only, usually only takes 20 to 30 minutes, but, well, 20 to 45 minutes, but with my anatomy, I warned them in advance that my anatomy was challenging. And for the best of the best urology surgeon like this guy, I warned him. He quickly found that out in a 20 to 45 minute surgery lasted two hours because of positioning and going slow and trying to remove it and just um, yeah the surgery went well my parents made it i got to go home god it truly brought all of his people all of his best people head of anesthesia at Matt fought for me to be there amazing nurses in the adult ed my orthopedic surgeon who's never practically there on Fridays, was there and free all day. Top of urology surgeon, best of the best urology surgeon. I didn't have an established urology surgeon until the fact that I got paired with him and like my incredible nurses, post-op and ED, pre-op. The past year and a half has lost a lot and medically like problems with my hearing implant and bell share, but I actually no longer have that. And the challenges that I've dealt with, post-spinal fusion. God is faithful because he is God, not because of what he does for us and he was so gracious and faithful yet again during the time and his presence was just so obvious and so real. Another reason why I wanted to share the details of this day was 
because I wanted to remember every detail and share all of that. I can look back at my life and see how faithful God has been throughout my whole life. All the miracles that I've experienced, big and small, and all the answered prayers. Even in the unanswered prayers, He's been faithful. I can't explain it, but there was something really special about this time and just how real His presence was. I just knew I was going to be okay. Like, obviously this was so unexpected. It came in within 24 hours, all of this had happened. Obviously surgery and a hospital stay was not on my radar. He carried me through that. Again, he carried me through my 30th surgery and I was able to do it with strength and grace and he brought all of his best people for this moment, for that time, and it's something that I will never forget. This was such a pivotal moment in my faith because I've experienced much heartache the past year and a half. I will look at this time, but remember how faithful he was then. He will be faithful just like that again. No matter what, even if I can't understand God's plan and the things that I've lost this last year. He is good because he is God, not because of what he does for us. His goodness is not dependent on what we have or what we don't have. His goodness is dependent on his care and his grace and he's God. It was an incredible 24 hours. Absolutely chaotic. I went 38 and a half hours without food and sleep, which is the longest I've ever went without sleep ever. I got to come home that night. Um, as I mentioned, I am going to have to do this again. I meet with my surgeon next month. The other one that I have is actually twice as big as a 6 millimeter. I'm not going to be able to pass this one on my own. I don't think he's ever... I think he said he'd never seen somebody pass one this size before, naturally. So where it is right now, they don't typically remove them, but it could obviously move at any time, and I'm doing a lot of traveling this year, so the thought of having an episode like one of these again while I'm gone is, like, really scary because I can't just go to any emergency room out of state and like expect a surgeon to be willing to operate on me because of my circumstances. I guess this next surgery would be a lot more major because of where it's located. I don't know if I want to do that yet or just kind of wait until it starts to pass. I don't know. It could stay that way for years. So I don't know, but the real I'm probably going to want it removed. We're going to just talk about that and what that looks like because of where it's located. Like I said, it's going to be a lot more of a major surgery which is not ideal. We don't want me to have one of these episodes while I'm gone out of state somewhere. The bottom line is it's gonna try to pass. I have a lot of decisions to make, but I, right now I don't have any information to make an informed decision. Our main focus was moving the one that was preventing my bladder from emptying all the way. That was the priority for my surgery. So. I don't know how I'm getting these. I'm learning that from posting on Instagram that it seems pretty common, especially in the OI community. So there's no like formal correlation between OI and kidney stones, but I feel like there is just because like it's so common in the OI community with men and women, which is really interesting in the OI world. So I don't know. I've never had until like seven or eight years ago, passed it, like handled that on my own, didn't even have to go to the hospital. It was fine and like never had any issues. Like I stay hydrated. I know people are going to ask and I don't know yet. I know they sent it to Mayo to try to figure out what kind it is. I'm really hoping that after I get the second one taken care of, this doesn't become a reoccurring problem for me. It's because these surgeries are complicated for me, given my anatomy, and my urology surgeon can attest to that. So, and I was just really fortunate that this time around, all the people that needed to be there were there that day. But again, another reason why I want to be proactive in removing the one that's double the size is because I could have an episode and both of my surgeons are out of sound. No matter where I am, in state, out of state, wherever I know, God will be faithful and take care of me. But I just wanted to share with you all of those God moments. Oh, another thing I wanted to share. One of my best friends um, who used to work at the ER that I was at knew somebody who was working that day. And, like, she sent him to, like, come check on me while I was there, which, like, I just wanted to share a glimpse with you. This video might not even be interesting to most of you, but I just wanted to share mainly for my own memory, remember how faithful God was and always is in the moments, even even in the hardest days, like he's faithful to carry us through those days. This was something really, really special. Grateful that I'm doing well and I was able to go home no pain, no pain whatsoever, like felt amazing. I even, the next day, less than 24 hours after my emergency surgery, I left and drove two hours to Bloomfield Hills for my best friend's baby shower. And then the following day had my cousin's birthday party. And then the following day started my new job. Less than 24 hours after emergency surgery, all that, I did all of that stuff. So like I was exhausted 
but I met all my goals. I'm so disappointed that I was going to have to miss my best friend's baby shower and I didn't end up having to miss it. And so, again, just God provided in so many ways. Not only did he provide in those 24 hours, but also the ability to make all my goals and not miss any of the things I didn't want to miss. It was just a weekend that I will never forget and I was just so grateful for his strength and grace. I hope you guys are doing well and I would not wish this experience on anybody. And I, unfortunately from Instagram, I know that a lot of you have went through this, so I'm sorry about that. It's tough. But um, another thing about having my spinal fusion surgery is it just makes everything else feel so much easier. So, but anyway, this video is so long, but I just wanted to share every single detail. So thank you guys so much for watching and for all your well wishes on Instagram. And I'll talk to you guys really soon. Bye.